In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the process of completing a monitoring report. Canada's wastewater system's effluent regulations set national effluent quality standards and require owners and operators to submit various reports on the operation of their facilities, including an identification report, monitoring reports, and combined sewer overflow reports. If your system has not yet filed an identification report, you will need to do so before starting your monitoring reports. The video here provides a walkthrough on how to log into the online system and file an identification report. Otherwise, let's get started on monitoring reports. Monitoring reports are due quarterly or annually, depending on the size and type of your wastewater system, and can be completed and submitted through Environment and Climate Change Canada's Single Window Information Manager and the Effluent Regulatory Reporting Information System. Monitoring reports are due 45 days after the end of the wastewater system's reporting period. I'm going to assume you know how to access this system from when you submitted your identification report. As such, I will go through that part of the process relatively quickly. If you're not familiar with this process or need a refresher, watch the first part of the video on identification reports, which goes through it in more detail. Also, I will be using an imaginary wastewater system, Green Bay Wastewater, owned by the imaginary municipality of Green Bay in this example. Be sure to enter the correct details for your facilities. Let's get started. I start by opening a web browser and going to the web address on your screen and select my language of choice. The next page asks how I would like to sign into Environment and Climate Change Canada's single window. Scroll down and select Continue to GC Key. Enter your username and password and click Sign In. Access the Effluent Regulatory Reporting Information System by clicking here in the Single Window Information Manager. Please note, it is not possible to save the reports until all the required information has been added. Therefore, it is recommended you have all of your information before starting. A list of the required information is available in the video description. Once your information is ready, go to Reports in the top menu bar and select Monitoring Reports. The table lists all of the monitoring reports that my system has been required to submit since the effective start date. The effective start date is January 2013, or the date at which the system began operating, whichever is most recent. As you can see, my system is overdue to submit several reports. For the moment, I'm going to focus on my current report. For overdue reports, it is recommended that you return to this point later and complete as many reports as possible. I will select my most recent reporting period, which in my case is this one here, 2017, January to March. Wastewater System Summary. This section contains some general information about my system, which is filled in by the reporting system. Nothing for us to do here. Next, effluent monitoring data. This is where I enter the data for my wastewater system for this reporting period. Fill in the correct details for your system. The data I enter here will be specific to my imaginary system. Was effluent deposited in this reporting period? So, over the length of the reporting period, was any effluent deposited from the system? Yes or no. For each month in the reporting period, was effluent deposited? For each month listed, indicate if any effluent was deposited. Yes or no for each one. Moving down to this line here, for the reporting period, enter the total number of days during which deposits were made. The total volume of these deposits in cubic meters, the average carbonaceous biochemical oxygen demand in milligrams per liter, and the average concentration of suspended solids in milligrams per liter. And we are on to the last section, which is for acute lethality test results. Does your wastewater system have acute lethality test results to report in this period? If your system's effluent was tested for acute lethality, select yes. Otherwise, select no. If yes, enter the details of the text. First is the date the sample was taken in year, month, day format. The next two refer to the procedures used by the laboratory for the test. The information should be available on the lab report. EPS1 RM13 is asking a single concentration or multi-concentration test was used. And EPS1 RM50 is asking if the procedure for pH stabilization was used. Finally, select whether or not the tested sample was acutely lethal. If additional acute lethality tests were performed, click Add Test and complete the same information for each additional sample. That's all the information that needs to be entered. 
Double check that everything looks correct and click Save and Approve Monitoring Report. Select the checkbox to approve the report for submission to Environment and Climate Change Canada and click Approve the Report. The monitoring report has been successfully approved and submitted. Please note that you may also be required to submit combined sewer overflow reports. For a walkthrough of this report, take a look at this video here. For more information, links to the Single Window Information Manager website, a detailed user guide on logging into and reporting through ARIS, and the regulations are available in the video description. Also in the description is contact information for the Wastewater Office at Environment and Climate Change Canada. Should you have any questions about the reporting process or requirements, feel free to contact us. Thank you for helping to keep Canada's waters clean.